From the moment that a missing persons case is opened, time is of the essence. Usually, if the missing individual is not found within the first few days of their disappearance, hope begins to dwindle that they will be found unharmed. There are, however, some cases where people are found long after they were reported missing. Number 5 In 1970, Lula Cora Hood was a single mother of four children who lived in East Galesburg, Illinois. She had come to the realization that she was unable to properly care for her children, and so she made the decision to let her sister Hazel adopt them. She would make regular trips to Hazel's home where she would visit with her kids. One day, while on one of her visits, the family got into an argument and Lula was told to leave the house. She did as she was asked, but when she didn't return as expected, her family started to become concerned. They tried to search for her, but as time passed by, they started to lose hope of ever finding her. Their hopes were dashed even further in 1996 when the skeletal remains of a woman were found in the brickyard across from her parents' house. It was determined that they matched Lula's height of 4 foot 10 and authorities as well as Lula's family resigned themselves to the fact that she had passed away and they held a memorial service in her honor. Police did, however, retain the remains in hopes that with the advancements of DNA technology, they might one day be able to determine without a doubt whether it was really Lula they had found. In 2008, two of her family members submitted DNA samples for comparison, and it was determined that the remains did in fact not belong to Lula, and her case was reopened. The family provided police with information, such as Lula's birthplace and any other cities that she may have had connections to. When police performed an internet search of her first and middle names along with her birth date, they stumbled upon a woman in Jacksonville, Florida who was using a different last name. They spoke to her over the phone and when asked to provide her social security number, it matched with Lula's. After 28 years, the mystery of Lula's disappearance was finally solved, but police are still left with the task of identifying the remains that were found some 25 years ago. Number 4 In 1985, Denise Bolzer 24 years old, was working as a bookkeeper at a small courier company in Manchester, New Hampshire. She was not enjoying her job as her boss had approached her, saying that he needed her to alter the company's books so that he could skim money off the top without his wife, who owned the company, finding out. He would eventually end up stealing over $100,000 from the company. When Denise decided that she could no longer keep his secret, she approached her boss's wife and explained what had been going on behind her back. This enraged her boss and he assaulted her, leaving her with bruises to her face after telling her that she would be dead within the next two days. She would tell her family that she'd been in an accident. On the 17th of January, a note was found in the house that she shared with her estranged husband in Raymond, Rockingham County that read, quote, We have your daughter. He would also report that he'd found her footprints in the snow beside the house, but they were covered by more snowfall. Denise's grandmother stated that Denise had approached her to ask for a loan, and it was found that she had cashed some checks before disappearing. A few days later, her estranged husband's truck, which Denise had been using, was found at Logan Airport in Boston. Her social security card, as well as her credit cards and birth certificate, 
were found on the front seat. A few months later, the company that she worked for accused Denise of embezzling $12,000, leading police to believe that she had taken the money and gone on the run. The charges against her would ultimately be dropped in 1993. After her disappearance, her husband wouldn't finalize their divorce and her parents stated that they believed there was foul play involved. Then in 2002, private detective Shirley Casey, a missing person specialist, became interested in the case after visiting the Doe Network. She read that Denise would have likely been living in a warm climate and she began searching for her in Florida databases. When she found a woman with a matching first name and date of birth, she informed police and Raymond. Officers traveled to Panama, Florida and knocked on the door of Denise James. She instantly broke down and confessed who she was, stating that she'd been waiting to be found for a long time. She had remarried and now her new husband said that he now understood why she always seemed down on Mother's Day. Number 3 In 1984, Petra Patsitka was a 24-year-old computer science student living in student accommodations in Germany. She had just finished her thesis paper and on July 26th, after going to the dentist, she was expected to take a bus to attend her brother's birthday party. When she didn't turn up at her parents' house, she knew something was wrong and she was reported as missing. This sparked a massive manhunt by German police, but they were unable to find any clues as to her whereabouts, prompting them to contact a popular German crime show to raise awareness of the case. This, however, also didn't bring them any closer to finding Petra. A 19-year-old carpenter's apprentice, who was only named by police as Gunter K, was questioned by police the following year as Petra's disappearance bore striking similarities to a murder that he had confessed to. In that case, the victim was found near the bus stop that Petra was supposed to use when traveling to her parents' house, and police believed that he had struck again. In 1987, he confessed that he had indeed ended Petra's life, and in 1989, she was declared dead. The case was closed despite her body never officially being found. Then, 31 years later, a woman who identified herself as Mrs. Schneider contacted police to report a burglary at her house. When police arrived and asked for her identification documents, she produced an old, out-of-date ID card and she confessed to who she really was. She would tell police that in the months before she disappeared, she'd been saving money to start a new life. She traveled from city to city over the next few decades, eventually settling in Dusseldorf. She was able to live undetected because she never opened a bank account, didn't have a social security card, driver's license, or passport, and she paid all her bills in cash. She stated that she made money by doing illicit work, though she didn't specify what type of work she was doing. When asked why she disappeared, she refused to give a reason and stated that she wanted nothing to do with her family members or the public as a whole. Number 2 On March 3rd of this year, after moving in with her boyfriend, Yuri Barksy in Palm Beach, Florida, 43-year-old Lindsay Jane Kennedy decided to go for a swim in a canal near her boyfriend's house. While swimming in one of the more shallow areas of the canal, she spotted a doorway which piqued her curiosity. She swam over and entered the doorway which revealed a tunnel. This made her even more curious 
and she followed the tunnel to see where it would lead. This tunnel would, however, lead to another tunnel, which led to another, and so on, and before she knew it, she'd become hopelessly lost. By that evening, Lindsay's boyfriend had reported her missing after returning home to find her gone, but with her purse and cell phone still in the house. For the following three weeks, there would be no sign of her. As she wandered through the tunnels, she found an unopened can of ginger ale and would occasionally sip from it to stay hydrated. Then on March 23rd, a woman who was driving by Atlantic and 11th Avenue heard Lindsay calling out for help and she pulled over to discover her in a storm drain. She phoned 911 and reported the situation to the operator, who sent a fire and rescue team to the scene. Lindsay was found unharmed and was rescued from the drain by firefighters, who were shocked to learn that she'd been down there for so long. Speaking to her mother, police learned that Lindsay had a long history of drug abuse and made questionable decisions when she was under the influence. All in all, she traveled a total of three miles from where she left the canal three weeks earlier. Number 1 In South Australia, 55-year-old Deborah Pilgrim was camping with friends in celebration of one of her friend's 60th birthday parties in 2019. At one point, she decided to go for a walk and she set into the sparse scrubland of the Australian countryside. About two hours into her walk, she realized that she had no idea where she was and immediately knew that she was in trouble. After trying to find her bearings, she realized that she needed to get a higher vantage point, and she tried to climb to the top of a windmill to see if she could spot a road or any landmark that might guide her in the right direction. The ladder was old and rusty, and as she climbed higher, the ladder got so thin that when she reached the top, she had to put one foot on top of the other to keep her balance. When she realized how high she had actually climbed, she was struck with vertigo and froze in place. Fearing that she may die up there, she started regulating her breath and eventually managed to slowly make her way back down the ladder again. The only water that she could find was dirty, and she had no choice but to drink it, causing her to become sick. She contracted a fever and at one point spent around eight hours lying in the shade of a tree. As she walked on, she came across several properties and she would knock on the doors while calling out for help, only to find that they were unoccupied and the doors were locked. At every property, she looked for security cameras, country fire service sirens, or structures to climb, but she was unsuccessful. She left messages on abandoned cars and left a trail of items that she picked up as she walked hoping that someone might spot them. She found a can of tinned soup and a ring pole, and she would have a teaspoonful every now and then to keep her from starving of hunger. She started hanging reflective items from the trees and carried a reflective jacket and foil in hopes that she would be seen from the sky. And at one point, a helicopter did pass over nearby. She ran into the nearest clearing but they failed to spot her and she decided the only way she was going to be found is if she started a fire. She did so and kept the fire burning, causing CFS crews to respond to the area, but she was only rescued after a person from Sydney who was remotely monitoring CCTV cameras at his cottage spotted an SOS message left by Lindsay in his driveway, so he contacted police. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to click that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But I've been Ty Knotts and I'll catch you guys in the next video.